Okay, Laura, this is Matthew here with FreePrescriptionLenses.com, and with the help of my GoPro camera, I'm going to show you how I cut prescription lenses for your Ray-Ban 2132, color 902, which is the tortoise. Let's get to work. we got a lot of ground to cover because I actually want to show you how your transition lenses darken. So I've taken out of the box. This is your Ray-Ban case, your Ray-Ban cleaning cloth, your Ray-Ban frame with a little protective sleeve on one temple and of course if Ray-Ban thinks it's a good idea to send one temple I'm gonna add a second one to this side when I ship to you that's the only thing different that I do so the first thing I'm gonna do is pop out the original lenses I'm gonna hang on to these because I'm gonna show you what I'm gonna do with those later but I'm gonna put your Italian frame into my Italian edger this is a Santinelli LE 1000 patternless edger and the first thing that's gonna happen is it's gonna trace the shape of your right lens Make sure all this is in view. And now it's going to trace the shape of your left lens. And Laura, it looks like you go by the name, or at least you pronounce it Lada. Instead of Lara, it's Lada, which is fine. My name is Matthew, but sometimes I pronounce it Matthew, which is quite distinctive. It throws a lot of people off. Okay, I'm going to pull up the shape of your lenses onto the computer. Your pupillary distance is 59. Let me type that in there. This is a polycarbonate lens being cut for a plastic frame. Let me run back through that cycle. Plastic. So the first thing I'm going to do, here are your lenses. They're actually this size, and I need to cut them down to fit into here. So let me get started. I'm going to show you what I'm going to do. Whoa, don't go anywhere now. Your right lens is minus 5, minus 75 at 180. I spin the axis wheel on my Marco 101 lensometer. Spin the power wheel to a minus 5. Your axis was at 180. Yes, I know I need to clean the top of my lensometer. Let's see. Spin this until your sphere power comes in clearly. And actually, let me make sure the lensometer is where it's supposed to be. Adjust the prism ring. There we go. Now let's spin this back to minus 5. Line this up to where your sphere power is coming clearly. Check your astigmatism, which is the cross curve, your secondary curve. And now I'm going to put some red dots on there. I'm going to darken them so you can see them a little bit, and of course that's the right lens. Now your left lens, let me pull this out. Let's see, spin the axis wheel to 168, because your prescription is minus 4 and a quarter, minus 1 at 168, so spin the power drum to 4 and a quarter. Wow, I got lucky, I didn't even have to rotate your lens. That looks good. Check your cross curve, your astigmatism correction, that is good. I'm dotting up the optical center of the lens. This red dot I'm putting on there is going to sit directly in front of your pupil. But I've got to put this into a lathe, so I've got to put a block on there as it's called. I'm going to use a double-sided adhesive sticker. Put the, well, that's the sticky side as you can tell. I'm going to pull the, the double side of it off. I'm sorry you can't see this, but this is where I line up your optical center into my crosshairs, just like the crosshairs of a scope. I check the vertical and the horizontal and make sure everything is lined up perfectly. Hopefully my next video, my next camera will have all that on file. Okay, here we go. This is your right lens. We're going to put it in and hit start. This device is called the LMU. It's going to come down and trace the shape of your frame onto the lens to make sure it's large enough to cut out. It's going to trace the side closest to your lashes first, that is the concave side. Then it's going to trace the outside of the lens, which is the convex side. The cutting wheel is actually down here at the bottom on the left, this rough one, which is like a heavy grit sandpaper. That's going to grind away the majority of your lens, in fact all of it. This wheel that's in the middle with the little channel, the little valley from your point of view, is going to put the bevel onto the lens so it stays inside the bevel of the frame. Now this is going to get a little bit loud so I'm going to have to close the door, but for now I want you to see how your lens strikes the cutting wheel. Okay, now your polycarbonate lenses are, the lenses you will be receiving are the thinner, lighter weight lenses. They are 40% thinner and lighter than regular plastic. They are actually almost virtually unbreakable and they're even bulletproof up to 22 caliber. And they have both UVA and UVB protection. Now here at freeprescriptionlenses.com, you buy the frame for me. You get free single vision lenses. At least 99% of the lenses are free. 
If you have a very high power, I'll just give it to you at my cost. Now you paid the upgrade to the transition and that was it. The reason why I'm speeding up is I want to show you how your transition lenses work. And in the meantime, let me show you how your prescription works. Your right eye, let's use this, reads minus, sorry for my handwriting, I had to write this really fast before the video. Your right eye reads minus 5, minus 75 at 180. Everything in the optical profession, and the, this power is a diopter. That is our unit of measurement like a gallon or an ounce. You have five diopters of correction for your right eye. 0.75 for your astigmatism correction. This first box, which is five, and I was gonna say the diopters go in quarter increments, so you have 0 0.25, 0 0.50, 0 0.75, one, and so on. Your right eye is minus five, which means you have 20 steps of correction for your right eye. You only have three steps of correction for the astigmatism. Now, without your glasses on, everything is way too large, so your lens will actually minify things. If you notice your lens is done, but it's still completely flat all the way around. So it's now putting the bevel on there so it stays inside the bevel of the frame, which is the knife-like edge that will fit into this bevel. Actually being technical, this, no, that is the right one because that's the right eye. Um, so without your glasses on, everything is way too large. So your lenses will actually minify, even though that word is not found in the dictionary, your lenses will minify, which is the opposite of magnify, to get everything the correct size. Your astigmatism makes everything clear. And let me back up because there is a stigma over the word astigmatism. It just refers to shape. People freak out when they hear that word. It's not a disease. It is not an affliction. It fluctuates. It comes and goes. But this box gets everything the correct size. This box takes away the fuzzy edges. So sixes and eights don't look alike. P's and the letter F won't look alike. And essentially it's the fine tune knob to make everything nice and crisp like it was on a camera lens. This last number being 180, and that's the horizontal meridian. That's zero at one end, 180 at the other. Zero, 180. So you're actually on zero technically because that is equal. If a circle is 360 degrees, zero and 180 are opposite of each other. For your left eye, it is 168, and that just tells where to fine tune. That number is completely arbitrary. I wouldn't worry about it. All right, so this lens is done. And one thing I want to do so I don't drop this on live TV is to dry this off. It's quite embarrassing when I drop a lens. It does happen in real life, but that's why you get to watch the entire process. I should get an extra tip if I don't drop this. Okay, Alada. All right, so now a little bit of rough edges on your lens, so I'm going to use my hand stone, which just works on friction. This is completely flat, and I can put my hand on it, although it gets hot. Um, I'm going to run your lens around, and you can see a little white powdery substance around the edge of the lens. I'm going to scrape that off with my thumbnail. You can see it's stuck on my thumbnail, and then my camera is good enough. You can see my V-shaped bevel on my thumbnail for, because I do this so much. Now here's my patented move. This is my signature move. I scrape all this off, put it on the counter, and then wipe it on the floor. As I'm fond of saying, kids, I went to school for years to learn how to wipe stuff on the floor. Don't expect to be able to do this as well as I do. Okay, I'm going to test the shape of the, the lens to make sure it's the correct size. I tuck it in at the outside corner and then push down at the nose. That goes in great. So I'm going to go ahead and cut your left lens, flip this over to left. And the power of the left lens, pull that up, is minus four and a quarter, minus one at 168. So really you need 19 steps of correction for your left eye, four steps of correction for your astigmatism. And then that last number, 168, just shows, shows me where to fine tune for the astigmatism. Now this is why I left the original lenses out. I emailed you and asked if you were a contacts. You said you were trying to get away from it for the time being. The reason why I have tricks up my sleeve I'm going to go ahead and include these with your purchase. You're getting a gray lens, but in case you want to change things up, I have a brown tinted lens that came out of there. Let me take this block off, which I do not need anymore. The little sticky pad. But you saw how I put your lens in. 
here's the chance. When you don't want to wear your prescription lenses, you can pop them out and you just have to thumb your nose at the idea with your thumb at the nose. I'm right-handed, so I've turned the frame downward. And with my thumb at the nose, I push down and the lens pops right out. Now you can torque the frame. You're not gonna hurt the frame. It just creates a little bit more separation. Now to put the lens in, just like before, I turn it upright and being right-handed, I keep this side closest to me. I tuck in at the outside corner, push down at the nose, and that goes in like a snap very easily. So here, you can pop your prescription lenses out, put the original glass lenses. These are the glass lenses. Tuck it in at the outside corner and push down at the nose. I rotate the frame this way, tuck it in at the outside corner, push down at the nose. And now when you're wearing your contacts, your same frame can be prescription lenses. Oh, I mean, I'm sorry, non-prescription, but a brown tinted lens while you're wearing your contacts. Now, when your contacts are bothering you, turn the frame downward. I grab it with my left hand again with my thumb at the nose. I push down with my thumb. I rotate the frame. I push down with my thumb and out they come. I will give you some protective sleeves for your lenses so that you can always protect them. You never have to worry about them getting scratched, but in the short term, I'm gonna put your prescription lens back up here. How's that for an effect? See how that minifies? When I move it in front of the word free, hopefully you can see that. Pretty cool effect. Okay, so I just wanna verify your prescription of the right eye. I'm gonna spin the axis wheel back to 180. Put it, that red dot that you see, which is gonna sit directly in front of your eye, that red dot wheel. I'm going to line it up in my Marco 101 lensometer. Check the sphere power. We're getting minus five. You have five, I mean, three steps of correction for your astigmatism. So I'm reading 575, which is a quarter step away from six. So to check that, minus if someone owed you $5 and then they owed you another 75 cents, they would owe you $5.75. That is what we're getting. If my GoPro camera is good enough, we're getting minus 575 for the total power. Now your left lens is done cutting. It's putting the bevel onto the lens now. And then we're gonna test, whoop, whoop, whoop. Let's close the door. My $30,000 Italian edger is not getting wet. Your Italian frame being cut in Italian edger. How about that? So we're almost done. I'm going to check the left eye prescription and then I'm going to put it under an ultraviolet light that will cause your lenses to turn dark in front of your eyes. Hurry up and finish. Hurry up and finish. Hurry up. Hurry up. Hurry up. This whole process takes about 15 minutes. It's now 8.44 on Friday, February 21st. 58 degrees in my hometown of Durham, North Carolina and according to my Samsung Gear watch. All right, that is done. The safety bevel going around the lens. You know what? I didn't dry it off. I did not dry it off. What if I drop this? Okay, with my thumbnail again, going all the way around. Now, it always used to anger my wife that I would drop this onto the floor. Sorry, honey. So in your honor, just to show you that I can do it, because last week was Valentine's Day, I'm going to wipe up all your schwarf, put it in my hand, and then drop it in the trash can just so my wife will be happy and let her know that I love her. So again, I'd start at the outside corner, tuck, use my thumbs, push down at the nose, it snaps right in. Drop that off, get a little bit moisture off, and now, actually let me check the power, spin that back to 168, and the power of your left lens is minus four and a quarter minus one. Spin the sphere power, I'm getting four and a quarter, hopefully can you see that? Just beyond four is four and a quarter. One more diopter for astigmatism correction, and we're actually getting five and a quarter. Can you see the five quarter, 550, 575, six? So we're at five and a quarter. Your pupillary distance is 59. Those two red dots are gonna sit directly in front of your eyes. I'm gonna put my pupillary stick on the end on your right eye where it begins, and now with the power of the left. If you can see the 60 on my PD stick, it is just shy of the 60 mark, which makes it 59. So that's how you know your pupillary distance is lined up. Whoa, dropping your card. Okay, let me clean the red dots off. Let me use my optical grade acetone. 
clean everything off and then I'm going to activate it, which means I'm going to turn your lenses dark. But one more thing I want to do before I ship or do anything else, and that's known as putting your frame in standard alignment, which means that I put it on the table, press down on each side, it is level, flip that over, that is level two, the hinges line up perfectly and close equally. So now the last thing I want to do is I have a little unit, let me move my mirror out of the way, I'm going to turn on an ultraviolet light which is going to cause your lenses to darken. Now, all transition lenses will darken on day one. If you give them two weeks, they're going to continue to darken every day for the first two weeks till they get to their final setting. I joke, it's like a new employee on the job where you have to train them for two weeks to get them perfect. Now, it does take direct exposure from the sun's ultraviolet rays for them to darken, meaning that they will not turn dark indoors and they will not turn dark when you're behind the windshield of a traditional car. They will darken in a convertible or a motorcycle, just not in the car because your windshield absorbs all the sun's ultraviolet rays so your upholstery doesn't rot and your dashboard doesn't crack from sitting in the sun. So if that happens, if you're doing a long trip and you want to actually have, see, of course you may have your contacts, but you can pop these lenses back in, your original glass lenses that I'm going to wrap up and ship to you. In just a moment, in fact the moment is up, this has darkened, you saw them clear. And now you can see them with a dark gray lens. And when you don't want gray anymore, you can pop the brown lens in on this side when you're wearing your contacts. Lada. I do appreciate it. You could have bought your frames from anyone, but you bought them from the guy who gives you the free prescription lenses. And then you just upgraded to the transition. I hope this has been fun watching to see how your glasses are made. And this is just one of the many, many ways I bring that loving feeling back to glasses. And I forgot to mention, if anyone out there has any questions, just email me at freeprescriptionlenses at gmail.com. Thank you again.